Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. And today we have another gun gripe episode for you. Hold on to your hats because this one is going to be a doozy. All right. Now, you might recall one of the previous videos that we made where we, we posed the question, are combat shotguns useless? And we drew a bit of hate uh, from that video, but some folks understood we were trying to lay things out in a very fair manner. Well, in today's gun gripe, we're going to be posing the question, are PCCs useless? All right. Now, I think you know the answer. I mean, obviously, every gun has a use, right? Um, but we're going to lay out some facts, and we're going to discuss some features and everything, and I think that you'll come away from this understanding the major differences between, like, you know, getting into the PDW territory, PCC territory, and getting into more of a, uh, let's just say, a gun you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with just about any assailant with uh, if you choose to do so. Uh, we are going to break into this. Uh, before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Ammunition Depot for supporting today's video. They have an awesome selection of ammo, wonderful prices, really fast shipping. If you use the code IV8888, um, you will get free shipping on all orders over $150. So check them out, Ammunition Depot. Um, so we're going to draw some hate on this one, man. Are they useless? No. I think they are. They're no, I'm not. kidding. They're no, not. of course I don't think they are. They're not. We're no, look, we're not shy like we we come right out there. We are no stranger to PCCs. We love nine millimeter PCCs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you've watched our video for any amount of time, I would say out of out of a lot of the YouTube channels that are out there that do stuff with guns, we probably have shown off more PCCs than just about anyone. Uh, we love them, right? They're cheaper to shoot, light recoil. You know, it's it easy gun to shoot. They're accurate. They suppress well. I mean, there's a lot of merits to like a 9mm PCC. Um, but we kind of get into the territory where, you know, is it the perfect thing to protect yourself with compared to other options that might just be a little heavier maybe? or mm, Maybe. Uh, so <laughs> what's the best way to kind of break this down in a way that'll make folks understand? All right. So I think to start with, all right, if you're carrying, uh, you, you mentioned 9mm, so we'll just go with that. I mean, PCC is a pistol caliber carbine. So basically anything that'll go into a traditional pistol, let's let's put it that, because we're not going to talk about large frame or large format pistols and get into all those semantics, okay? But if you're carrying a handgun, say a good old Glock 19, right? Sure. Or Glock 17, whatever you want to carry, all right? You've got some limitations with the range that you could engage a threat with, which there's also the argument of, well... If you, Shoot can better. Get a, if you can get away, then get away. If they're far enough, uh, you know, away not to be in immediate danger, get the hell out of there, that whole thing. We're not talking about that today. We're just talking about the merits of the firearm itself, the cartridge that it shoots, and whether or not it is useful or a big old pile of steaming garbage. All right. So <laughs> it's right. definitely not a pile of steaming garbage. All right. So you got a handgun. How far can you accurately shoot a handgun in quick succession? All right. In quick succession. Yeah, in quick succession. I would say like like shooting relatively fast splits, I would feel comfortable keeping rounds on a ten inch plate at maybe fifteen yards. Okay. Maybe twenty. All right. So on a good day. The whole idea with PCC, all right, you're 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 throwing the carbine in there. So you add a stock, whatever the case is, and you give more stability to be able to more accurately and precisely shoot that firearm you can extend that range of engagement out a very long way, oh, right? And we've proven that in our videos yes. many times. And, like, my idea of PCC is, like, literal pistol caliber carbine, all right? We've shown this off before. This is the B&T USWG. Uh, it's a chassis for a Glock family of pistols. You know, you can drop 17s, 19s, 34s. In this case, we have a 17L in here. And this greatly enhances the capabilities of this platform. And this is a two pound, like 13 ounce rig, right? Yeah. So we weighed all of these rigs, y'all. Uh, the BNT USWG, two pounds, 13 ounces. So under three pounds, right? Load the mag. You're probably right at about three pounds, give or take a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But that is a very lightweight little rig. And this usually travels with me where I go 
and it stays in a backpack with a ham radio and a few other odds and ends, medical equipment, that sort of thing. It's a very handy package. They have these for SIGs, like the P320s or M17s, and that's an even more compact package. You know, I think of pistol caliber carbine, I think, like lightweight, extending the capable range of say nine millimeter specifically sure um we'll we'll just use that as a as a you know starting point but um when you get into like larger pccs like dedicated pccs that aren't like handguns dropped in chassis you know you're talking like like smgs that sort of thing like bnt apc 9k all right this is a purpose-built like sub gun more or less all right so and that one is a machine gun. This one, <laughs> this one has the fun switch. Okay, so you're getting into something that weighs twice as much as a Glock in a chassis. So practically speaking, this is a great firearm, you know. But does it do anything more Chad, than fold that stock? Okay, and show them the the folded um, size compared to the the Glock. Bloop. I mean, you're not too far off. You're okay? not. Okay. Now, now your weight comes in on the APC 9K. You're coming in at five pounds, three point seven ounces. So yeah. a considerable uh, increase in weight. Yeah. One would argue that you could take the BNT USWG at two pounds, thirteen ounces, put it in your backpack, add another Glock with it, and still be maybe getting right at the weight of the uh, APC 9K on its own. So that's the argument that I would make: is that if you had you know, your main sidearm and the uh, the USWG, you know, now for the weight of a PCC that's dedicated, now you are basically covering not only having an additional gun that takes the same magazines and being able to increase the range, but still being in just as, honestly, probably just as capable. Mm -hmm. So that was the other thing I was going to mention <clears throat> was um, the barrel lengths on these two platforms are pretty similar right so you're getting the same velocities roughly same energy on target but is one more capable than the other for the extra added weight in some ways yes you can accessorize the bnt more you can put lights lasers gizmos what's it who's it's everything on there to your heart's content right you got limited rail space on the bnt you could put a flashlight on it instead of for grip like i have on this sbr but you know simple is sometimes better but the other glock that i'm carrying is in my appendix holster so mm -hmm. i'm carrying another firearm on my person and you mentioned the magazine compatibility that's a huge thing with pccs is having that magazine compatibility with the other types of pistols that accept those mags so glocks and then glock fed carbines you know which there's tons of them out there from multiple manufacturers you know so you can get an smg that takes glock mags but they're going to be a heavier platform and they're still useful, but I'd rather have a chassis gun any day of the week over something like the APC if I was going to just tote it around and whatever in like more of a non-duty environment, if you will. I, I mean, think that the argument that people will tend to associate with why PCC is an inferior option would be that, you know, Chad sort of said it, uh, it kind of danced around it, but you're still launching a nine millimeter. Yeah. All right. One way or the other, it's a nine mil and, and one could say, well, with my PCC, I can hit a target 200 yards away knowing my hold, or I can hit a target 150 yards, or at 100, I can I can dome a 10-inch plate over and over and over again as fast as I can pull the trigger, and that's useful, believe me. Now, a 9mm still possesses a decent amount of power out of this barrel length at 100 yards, and I don't know about y'all, unless you're some super pro shooter, your average person is just not going to be able to take a sidearm and place targets, you know, out a hundred yards away and be able to consistently and rapidly engage a 10 inch size target, which, you know, now you're in the cranium territory in terms of the size of a cranium. So like, you know, if you've got enough time to make an accurate shot and these guns are accurate, uh, you, you have a game changer in that, you know, you can end a threat that's a hundred yards away. Um, so but you're still launching a nine millimeter. Okay, now what if the assailant's wearing body armor, you know, that sort of thing. So that might be a consideration. Now you're, you're definitely under gun. So I think that's always been what people tend to think about when it comes to PCCs and where they sit in the mix. They're like, well, if I'm going to have a five pound, 3.7 ounce gun, why not have just a bit more weight and have a rifle? Um, that tends to be, but 
we are going to discuss a couple of options. Uh, now, I will say both of those rigs with the stocks folded are very compact, right? Those would disappear into a backpack, into a laptop case. So we've done videos in the past like where we showed off our laptop case and our little, you know, clandestine bags and things like that. Now, when you get into a full-size rifle or something, that's when you're going to not really have the capability to hide some of these other rigs that we're going to show you uh, quite as easily as you could a PCC. So where the PCC wins some points over a full-on PDW or a rifle, which we're about to discuss, is that you know, you're going to win some points in that they're very concealable, they're compact, they're easy to hide, they're easy to shoot, um, probably a little limited on the range, a little bit limited on the power and capability, but it makes up for it in its compact nature. I think that's, that's kind of where PCC sit in this thing. It does. And something too about the BNT uh, systems, they do have holsters available for them as well. So you could literally wear your PCC on your hip, right? So yeah. that's kind of a cool factor too. Um, something else I wanted to mention when you were talking about that, you know, you carry that, that particular rig and you've got your gun in an appendix holster. Um, that's also a combat multiplier, right? Like what's better than one gun? Two Multiple guns, guns, right? What if a gun goes down? What if your gun malfunctions, has some catastrophic failure or something? Now, it's probably not going to happen, but it's nice to know that you have a spare gun should you need it. Or, okay, what if you've got a buddy of yours with you or your significant other and something goes down and maybe they don't have a gun on them? Well, guess what? Now they can't have a gun. Now you have another gun you can give to someone else. And now you've multiplied your ability to deal with the situation by a factor of, of an, uh, another person right? You've got more eyeballs. You've got more tactical ability to deploy more guns into a situation if that's what you need to do. So it is never a bad idea to have extra guns. I would even argue that in someone's, let's just say, maybe you've got a, you know, a three-day pack you keep in your vehicle, or maybe you've got um, a bag you carry every day, like a go bag or something. Maybe even consider if you're not going to have a PCC, at least maybe have an identical backup gun to what you're carrying. You never know if you need a spare. You never know if you need to arm someone. That's just always a consideration that I think is probably worth looking into or at least considering. So stepping up from PCCs, you have PDWs. All right, so not to be not to be compared, really, because personal defense weapon, in my opinion, kind of signifies a step up in caliber, you know, cartridge, power, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. I usually think of PDWs as something with like a rifle type cartridge. I mean, you could consider these nine millimeter PCCs PDWs to a certain degree, but I think you're, you're lacking in that power department. Yeah. And that's when you need like a rifle that's compact. So in my mind, I feel that, you know, if you're going to go like a PDW, all right, personal defense weapon, you're going into a situation where you think there might be trouble or you think you might need to protect yourself. We're talking a little more outside, like, you know, you might be dealing with somebody wearing body armor. You might be dealing with multiple people. There's no telling what you might be going into. And you want to be ready for anything. And you want, you don't know if an engagement is going to happen at 30 or 40 yards right in front of you or in a hallway right in front of you, or if it's going to be 300 meters outside the front door. So, Knowing that you can take on a, 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 a potential gunfight at any range in any situation and have that capability, that's where I feel the PDWs start to kind of shine a little more getting into more of a rifle, a compact rifle. So let's start out with our, um, our next option here. This is stepping it up from the APC. Um, this is a CMMG Descent in 5.7 by 28. Uh, this one is wearing a Huxworks thro uh, flow through suppressor. This is a 5.56K. Uh, suppressor. This is a 3D printed suppressor, by the way. It's pretty cool. Uh, without the suppressor, this rig weighs six pounds, 0.2 ounces. So only a little more than the BNT, and we're stepping up into a 5.7 by 28. Now, granted, not a super full power rifle cartridge, particularly out of this short barrel. However, it's still offering a good bit more power than 9mm, especially when you combine it with a good projectile, like some good black tip ammo or some penetrators or something that's going to have a little more ability to shoot through soft armor and things like that than your standard 9mm. With the suppressor, it brings our weight up to 6 pounds, 12 ounces with the suppressor. Um, the stock on this unit does fold. So, you know, you can imagine without the can... Uh, on here. Now, 
I personally, I like to have the suppressor on it. But if you didn't want to run the can on it, uh, your overall length is really not that much bigger than the 9mm PCC. Mm -hmm. Okay, dare I say, probably about the same size. Maybe a little longer, two or three inches longer perhaps. Uh, but the overall concept and platform and the way that you kind of think about carrying it around and using it is really not much different. Uh, than a PCC, but you're just stepping up in the power category a little bit. Uh, you guys might remember that 46 by 30 video we did on the, on the 4.6 descent, right? So there's a lot of options there. Now, granted, that one had a brace on it, uh, you know, with a regular, you know, like rifle buffer tube on it. it. Didn't have it's not the bufferless system, but if you really want to still get into that PCC compact nature, there are bufferless pistols like this chambered in you know some pretty powerful cartridges that you can get even you know full-on 556 762 by 39 you look at the brownells mm -hmm. uh ar uh, the ar 180s uh, you know they have those you can get the 762 by 39 little short barrel and have the bufferless system and put a folding brace or stock or something like that on it and then you're still getting into the compact nature of a pcc it's going to be a little longer of course but now you're getting into a little bit more full blown of a full power rifle cartridge. Well, it would be full power if you were shooting it out of a long barrel. Right. So right. that's that's the major like thing with with my my opinion on PCCs and PDWs like yep. if you if you take a rifle and you condense it down to the size of like a common PCC, you're losing so much velocity. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Especially in like you know high power cartridges like five five six and seven sixty by thirty nine and such, um, not so much in like three hundred blackout like especially subs because they're pretty forgiving obviously because mm -hmm. it is subsonic. But um, I'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But um, you know, a lot of unburned powder outside the barrel, huge mm -hmm. flash, concussion. Like they're just. If I was gonna have something like that, I think I'd rather just have a PCC and a good nine millimeter. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're talking about like, you know, a normal, super short barrel, normal everyday use and carry that sort of thing, just uh, like normal EDC, nothing, nothing crazy going on in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not planning on going into a war zone, right? Just normies, right? Like yeah, me, yeah. like a normie like me. Um, nine millimeter suits the bill just fine. I agree. But I agree. There's a couple other points I want to kind of bring up. When we get into the PDW thing, like we mentioned the, the, the kind of shorter barrels in the 762 by 39 you know, you get a 10 and a half inch barrel, you're still getting some decent power at a 762 by 39 but obviously with a rifle cartridge, as Chad said, you do begin to lose a good amount of steam, but there is sort of a cutoff, I mean, especially in 5.56. I mean, when you're talking about shooting through, let's just say, armor or some type of a hardened target, if you will, or maybe automotive glass or something like that, or maybe drywall or a door or something. You know, when you look at those types of just basic barriers you're going to see in, a, in an urban environment or something, um, obviously an 18 or 20 inch barrel is going to get you the full potential out of a 5.56, but you don't want to go running through a building with a, you know, 20 inch barrel, uh, which we did. That's what we had. We had full M16A4 flat tops, and that's that's what we had. That's what we used. They had the Knights rail systems. We we didn't have M4s, right? M4 has a 14 inch barrel, right? So you're still getting some decent power out of a 14. But then you get into like the Mark 18 crowd, and we've got this beautiful POF 416 to show you here. Now this is a POF 416 machine gun. Uh, this gun I want to say has a 10 and a half inch barrel on it. So you know, pretty short barrel. But when you get into what is affectionately known as the Mark 18 crew, like you've, you're always going to have the people that that swear by the Mark 18, uh, you know, just as a spec, as a as a type of gun that you can grab and go. Um, okay, now are you going to get full steam ahead out of a ten and a half inch barrel, five five six? Um, you're on the you're on the cuff there. You know, like you get down to a seven and a half, you're going to start to lose so much velocity that you might as well be slinging 22 Magnum or something, right? So uh, that always tends to be a point of contention. It's like, what barrel length is the right barrel length? I don't know if you noticed the other day, I saw a um, <clears throat> a post on Instagram from FN and mm -hmm. they're making a scar pistol now. And I thought, okay, cool, scar pistol. And start looking at the specs. Seven and a half, seven inch, and barrel. And a half inch barrel. 
I mean, I'm not trying to take a dump on them. Look, it's a cool gun, but it's like, what were they thinking on the barrel length? I, I'm just, I'm trying to, is it just a range blaster? Is that who they're trying to sell to? But no serious person is going to carry a seven and a half inch barrel 5.56 five, and having it serve the role that, that they're trying for it to serve and take it seriously. Like yeah. knowing what, if you know anything about ballistics, especially just 62 grain, you know, SS-109 projectiles, like just good old military ammo out of a seven and a half leaves a lot to be desired. But when you get 10 and a half and more, I feel like 12 and a half is kind of, I don't know if I'd really want to go shorter than a 12 and a half. But again, you get into that Mark 18 crew. Okay. Now, what are we talking when we say that? When you have a 10 and a half, 12 and a half inch barrel, just get out of the M4 territory. Get out of the out of the 14 inch, 12 and a half, 10 and a half in that ballpark, somewhere around there. What purpose are you serving with that barrel length? And what are the ranges that you can, you know, shoot accurately and, and cause lethal wounds on people? Well, Johnny, I have an answer for that. Let's hear it. All right. So I guess that's the point of contention. That's is. what we have to figure out. All right. So look, PCC, all right, nine millimeter, short barrel, you're going to get somewhere in the ballpark of three to 400 foot pounds, depending on the ammunition, right? At the muzzle. All right. You're going to lose a lot of that steam. Out, you know, out at range, mm-hmm. reasonable ranges, you know, for, for handgun and like PCC type engagements, right? But with a rifle, all right, if you're shooting full power M855, you're going to get roughly three times that amount of energy out of a shorter barrel, like say a 10 and a half to 12 and a half. Just this is a rough, rough estimate. You're going to lose velocity between 12 and a half and 10 and a half, of course, right? My preferred length is like 11 and a half. Because mm-hmm. you don't gain a whole lot up to twelve and a half, but you lose a lot going down the ten and a half, and you're still getting about twenty eight hundred feet per second, which gives you in the ballpark of about a thousand foot pounds right at the muzzle. So, in if, a room to room fight, that's a game changer. Yeah, effective range, like terminally speaking, for M eight five five to perform as it's intended, you're going to get about one hundred twenty five yards, right. roughly. So, because it won't tumble, it won't break apart, it won't do yeah. what it's supposed to do past that range really like on paper yeah. you know realistically it'll put a hole in you and barry always said like you know get a hole in you yeah you're probably gonna die right yeah, yeah. so you don't want a hole in you i wouldn't want to be shot with it at any range That's right. but now can i take a mark 18 or this or this 416 and can i sit uh can i lay in the prone and hit you know a 12 inch target at 300 yards with it yes, yes. absolutely you can look absolutely you can hit D twenty eights like human Probably silhouettes, at five. seven, eight, nine hundred yards with them. Yeah. But you're you're getting into like what would you call it? That's kind of harassment. like harassment range, right? Harassment interdiction or like area target. Yeah. Well, I mean the accuracy's there, so it's not like you can't shoot a point target at a longer range. But it's more of like harassment. Like I yeah. mean, yeah, you don't want to get shot. Believe me, trust me. Like getting no. shot is not a sh- fun. A shorter rig. Yeah, go ahead. Right, but but the shorter rig, the terminal performance that you get is going to be reduced. Although, I mean, there's still going to be the psychological effect of your enemy being hit with a projectile mm-hmm. and they don't know where it came from, especially if you're running a can or something. So, you know, so the, hiding your position a bit. The, um, the whole point to me is like you have a, a given platform for a given purpose. So yeah. I can't take the 416 and stick it in my backpack. You know, or even like any of my short ARs. Now, there's companies out there that, God bless them. You know, they try to fold every part of an AR and take parts off and all this stuff. I hate that. I hate variables, right? I, I hate pulling barrels off and replacing them or folding them and putting them back in place. You got a red dot on there and you're shooting 50, 100 yards. I mean, that's probably fine. But yeah. even folding them, you know, you still got the weight. So there's that to contend with. I mean, by the time you deck out a rifle, you're talking probably eight pounds or more. Yeah, when we start so. comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges and everything like that, you look at, let's just say, a close-in situation. I mean, most personal defense situations occur at extremely close range, 7 to 10 yards, sometimes closer. And usually most self-defense situations, with especially with handguns, are, are usually over in, was it, less than four or five rounds? Give Someone's take, got a yeah. hole in them. Someone's got a hole in them in four or five rounds and seven to ten yards, and that's dangerous, right? Now, let's compare 
the power of like this 416 to a 9 mil at a in a in a really close in like room to room fight or something. Now, obviously, no comparison. I want that 416. Yeah, no That's, comparison. No comparison. If if I know I'm going into a situation and I want to make sure that I am armed as well as I can be armed with mm. the most compact weapon that I can think of, I'm going to I'm going to choose I'm going to choose a 10 and a half or a 12 and a half inch AR mm. all day long over something like a sub gun. Um, especially, I don't know if the person on the other side of the door is wearing armor. I don't know if they're mm-hmm. behind cover. I mean, it's like, there's a lot of variables. Although, 9 mil does penetrate pretty decent. But it ain't that powerful. So, coming from a standpoint of normal Joe, right? I mean, I'm just going out into everyday life, right? But I do like to be a little bit more equipped. So, sure. if we're traveling... Like, you know, even within the state, going to be gone for several days or traveling out of state with the family, I always take a rifle with me in the vehicle because rifles aren't a big deal to go across state lines. Most of the places we travel, you know, got hidey holes in the vehicles. Not a big deal, okay, to keep a rifle in there, keep a battle belt with medical, extra mags, anything that you might need on there. We keep fire starting kits and camping stuff in the vehicle, you know, like three-day food supply, that sort of thing. Just emergency supplies. And that, a, a, a good general so, status of preparation. Yes. So a rifle is part of that for me because at that point, like, I'm going somewhere that I don't have control over and I can't just go home and, you know, step it up a notch, if you will, if it's mm. like a home base thing. Um, but just going out every day, I usually just carry a gun on me and then mm-hmm. I'll just tote this you know, this B and T with me because mm-hmm. I don't see myself ever falling into a situation where I'm going to need to use it. Yeah. You can but, always deescalate, but you can't escalate but, if you don't have the ability to escalate. Yes, this, this is a very capable tool. And, you know, to answer the initial question, I think PCCs are immensely useful. Mm-hmm. And when they are set up as they're intended to be, like I think of PCCs, they need to be number one, conveniently light right light to carry around they you know they they shoot a lighter um you know type of ammunition i mean a full mag of nine millimeter is going to weigh less than a full mag of 556 for example so by the way real quick the weight on the on the 416 seven pounds 5.6 ounces so when you compare this full mm-hmm. size 416 with the flashlight and a red dot on it to the USWG, now you can see where those two mm. extremes lie. Now you're t- mm. this is that's a much lighter to to mm. to to go to your point. Yes, yeah. a much lighter firearm. Um, but yeah, just a lightweight, useful. It serves the intended purpose, and that's all it needs to do. Mm. It needs to give me the ability to shoot, you know, pistol rounds at at more precisely at slightly longer distances with more control, because. You know, I think about liability as well in self-defense scenarios. I mean, would I rather shoot a Glock 19 off my hip if I had to, or if I have time, grab this thing? I mean, you, you see videos of uh, some of the other YouTubers out there. They'll do demos where they're pulling like MPXs and things like that out of backpacks, and that's that's fantastic. But it's still like you're pulling an SMG out of a backpack, and my backpack's small. You know, I keep a lot of stuff in there, so this takes up a lot less real estate Mm-hmm. in that pack and it's less to tote around on a regular basis and not having a huge pack keeps that gray man status if you will so there there's a lot of points you know with a good pcc but like as far as ideal pccs go this is kind of my ideal right here I so agree. i think they're immensely useful I, I like that and i really love the flux raider yeah like that's my jam i now, love that gun it, it's awesome and i think that there, there's a lot of contention that can go into the, to the decision like this. And, you know, you brought up something that I think is a really important point that I want to reiterate and, and kind of put my spin on it, is that you are responsible for every projectile that leaves your barrel. You might be trying to do the right thing, right? If you decide to deploy a gun into a situation and escalate a situation or end a threat that is obviously already escalated to the point of no return and you either can flee or do something... Let's just say you've decided to do something and you shoot at the bad guy and you miss and you hit some mom and her baby behind him. Well, guess what? You're responsible for those shots. Like every bullet has a lawyer attached to it. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, okay, if I am going to take the shot, am I going to do it? 
you know, my adrenaline's pumping. I'm going nuts. And I'm like thinking, oh my gosh, here it is. It's happening. You get that fight or flight reflex and you go to point your pistol when you're doing this. Oh crap. You know, think about Elijah at the mall mm -hmm. that he, he was able to claim his composure under stress and make those shots. Elijah Dickens. And it was not easy shots he took. It was some decent range with a, with a compact gun. But he was able to con maintain his composure and do what he needed to do. Could that have gone any any other amount of ways? Of course it could have. Now, would I have preferred to have a tool that I'm more comfortable and more precise with? If given the choice, well, that answer is absolutely yes. Because as much as I want to stop the threat, as much as I want to try to save the day, as much as I want to do the right thing, it's still dependent on my abilities to make sure that round goes exactly where I want. And I think if given the choice and having enough time to prepare, uh, obviously mm -hmm. I'd prefer a rifle uh, mm -hmm. all day long to something like that. But that's a very useful tool. And mm -hmm. I do love my Raider and the USWs are I think for, for everyday use, I think a PCC is a pretty general purpose tool. You know, if, yeah. if you got the ability to tote one around, but, you know... In my opinion, just it needs to be something that's compact, mm -hmm. not loaded down with all kinds of accessories and you know things that you really don't need. Keep it simple. You know? I agree. But I do think that they do have their place and they are immensely useful. Yeah. I so. mean, as much as I love this, how are you going to carry it? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going about your business day to day mm -hmm. in an everyday environment, and especially if all you have is a small backpack mm -hmm. and your backpack is extremely small, mm -hmm. there's no way, you, even if you broke this down, there's mm -hmm. no way you can get away with hiding this. Yep. So I think that's where the big area of contention is as well. It's like, can you carry it every day? Can you conceal it? Can you, you know, put it into a small configuration and hide it easily and be able to have it on you and it be not such an inconvenience that you're like, eh, eh, I don't want to worry about that. If you grab your bag and it's always got your USW in it, then you know it's always in there. It's mm -hmm. always got your back. And it just comes becomes part of your kit, part of your everyday carry that you're mm -hmm. going to have on your backpack, you know, mm -hmm. just like your radio and yep. your supplies. Well, maybe one day, you know, SBRs won't be a thing on the NFA anymore and you can just go to this, you know, gun shop and you can just pick up a useful tool right out of the box instead of having to pay an extortion tax and wait on permission to put your pistol into a chassis system. Yeah. You know, I maybe. mean that, in my opinion, that rig, hold it up one more time so they can see. But in my opinion, that rig right there, it, that's a game changer that everybody needs to have something like that, whether it's the flux or whether it's, um, the B and T we've done a video where we compare, uh, the flux Raider to the B and T chassis. And, you know, there's some, some points, that, that I like, you know, some pros and cons of each system, but overall, both the guns are fantastic. I love them, and they're wonderful, and I, I totally feel absolutely well-armed when I have either of them in my hands, and mm -hmm. especially the one with the 17L. Like, mm -hmm. the long slide Glock in there, oh, man, it just it shoots so freaking good, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we made that video, I was surprised at some of the splits we were shooting and how accurate we were. And that right there is what separates the men from the boys when it comes. If you are going to run a pistol caliber, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, people can argue, but at the end of the day, the proof is what it is. Well, I can take my full 16 and I can put a round on target and I can dump a thousand foot pounds. Well, I can shoot that same target in that same amount of time and I can dump three or four rounds and that's like 1600 foot pounds. Yeah. Right. Is that, is that how it works? <laughs> is that how that math works? Well, you know what? <laughs> Here's the thing, you know, the faster you can be. Ding, 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 ding. So are PCCs useless? No. Heck no, they're not. Um, just to understand that, you know, if you are going to get into something, you know, like this rig, you know, that there, there is definitely some other things you have to consider. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a lot less places you can take this and hide it easily and everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we've done videos on truck guns, and I think that's kind of where you get more into your vehicle slash truck gun slash travel gun is something like this where, you know, you've really got a compact um, rifle that can still deliver the goods out to distance, but it's more of a, you know, hey, I need to fight my way back to my car and get my rifle if it's gotten that bad. I mean, there's not a lot of situations you can't solve with that rig right there. I don't really foresee myself being in situations like that. Yeah, you know, I don't know, but maybe. 
people can fantasize all they want, but I mean, like realistically speaking, eh, you know, I agree. So. I think, I think reality, what, what we always end up being guilty of as people is like reality is always so much more boring, right? Than, than we, we really make it out to be. I mean, like, you know, we, we buy our awesome microtech knife and we're going, you know, going in and out and we think, oh man, I'm going to John Wick someone if they try to mess with me. But reality is you're going to dull that thing cutting open boxes. Yeah. You're going to lose it. Like, yep, that's, all them. reality is so much more boring. Everyone thinks, oh man, it's going to be a motorcycle gang of bears on top. Of, I mean, should you be ready for a motorcycle gang of bears? Well, yeah, you should be ready, but is that going to happen? The likelihood of me pulling a rifle out of my truck and having to, you know, protect myself from a gang of thieves is probably slim. Now, am I going to pull that rifle out and shoot a coyote or maybe well, dispatch a wounded deer on the side of the road? That's happened to me a lot. Yeah. How many times have I had to take my rifle out of my truck and, and go to work? Not often. Never, right? How many coyotes have I shot? How many animals have I dispatched? So a rifle is a tool. And there are many, many different things that this can be used for. So I think that it's just holistically important to have a rifle in your vehicle at least because you never know when you might need to use it for something, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think that kind of brings us home, man. It pretty much brings us home. Any other points? Um, hmm. Let me think. Um, ah, there is one point. Yes. Microtex. Like, man, yeah, I carry my UTX, my 85, man. So that's my EDC. And if I have to, I'm going to fight my way back to my vehicle and we'll get my Claymore. You know, if I really got to go to work, I'm just kidding. I love Microtex. I know, I do too. But They're I awesome. am, look, I am guilty. The most it gets used for is cutting open those Amazon packages. Exactly. You know how many <laughs> Microtex I've lost? Huh? You know how many Microtex I've lost? I don't want to know. I've lost. I don't. I don't. I don't want to remember. I, I want to pretend it never happened. Look, I I have lost one Microtex. You know, and I got a buddy that. Well, we have a buddy that's like. Man, I got this like knockoff Microtech, and this thing's great. Check, 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 check it out; it works just the same. I'm like, oh, I mean, it's pretty cool. It's like, yeah, man, it's like forty bucks. I'm like, maybe I should get one of those and leave my nice ones at home, you know, or just go back to carrying like a normal like you know case knife or something. But but isn't that what we're all guilty of? Yeah. Look, I, reality look, is so much more boring. That's I, the issue. Look, I like the convenience though of an out the front knife. Reach in my pocket, go whoop, mm -hmm. cut up what I need to whoop, done, and then it's out of here. And there ain't no, like, oh, uh, fumbling, trying to fold it, you know, let somebody borrow your knife, and they, like, cut their finger off because they're trying to fold back a lock back. I'm like, come on, y'all. Microtech makes a fine knife. Yeah. They really are. But, look, Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And gals, we got a lot of female viewers, too. I, and look, I check the specs on there. I get back. Look, I, I'm kind of slightly Rain Man with this stuff. Sometimes I get in there, I've noticed that, like, 74% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. You need to fix that. You need to go over there and subscribe and click that notification bell. Make sure you get all of our videos, right? And I think like 12% of our viewers are female. So look, there's some ladies out there. We appreciate you ladies, okay? But That's a we, lot of but females. guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed this video here today. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe this, maybe there's some points in here you agree with, something you disagree with. Of course, I'm just going to defer you to the comment section down below. Go ahead and wade in that cesspool of glory and feel free to drop all of your commentary down there, and uh, I'll probably read some of the comments. Glorious, and, uh, let's see, glorious yeah. cesspool. Is that an oxymoron? Uh, I glorious cesspool. But it's you can't walk away from it. It's like a, a train wreck. Well, you dive in. You definitely do. You do. You dive in. Once yeah. When you, you go, when you get into the comment section, it's just on fire. You but can't like, just read one. But it's like a train wreck. It's like you go, oh no, a train wreck. But you're like. Oh, you have to watch. Like it's it's just there's certain things that it's just a morbid fascination that we have and, and that's what the comment section is. Like you are gonna read all these comments thinking, God dang, there's some twisted people out there. So I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments about if you love or hate PCCs. I wanna know. Let me know down below. I I wanna let's let's continue the conversation, shall we? I hope yeah. everyone has a great day. I hope you've all had a great week. I know we have Christmas coming up. And I hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas. We're going to have more content coming, obviously, before then. But 
A big thanks to all of you for supporting our efforts. We've been at this a long time, and uh, I enjoy it. I mean, there are some days where it feels like work here and there, but you know what? Any Anything you do that you love enough can, can eventually start to feel like work, but I, I welcome it. I enjoy this. I like to post these questions. I like making videos. Um, I love what we do, and I appreciate y'all being a part of what we do. And uh, thank y'all all very much. And uh, anything else, Chad, before we head on? Nope. Eric is the habitual pot stirrer. Yeah. Yeah. We like stirring the pot. Or as Dave Chappelle would say, is it, he's a habitual line stepper. Line stepper. I'm a line stepper. Like, this is a good video. Let's do this. I'm like, all right. I'm like, ooh, this is gonna this is gonna piss some people off. Yeah, we're up to our armpits in 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 the fecal matter of ideas. <laughs> I mean, it's just this, that's, is, this is the way the conversations go, though. It's like, hey, you think this will piss some people off? I think it'll really piss some people off. Then Let's we should make it. a video. We should do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Have a good one. We'll see you. Many more videos on the way. Catch you next time.